Please welcome on stage Benny Mark. Thank you. Yeah, so um, although I'm from Tempo 3, this talk's more about uh, performance. Our company is very um, focused on yeah, performance during websites. And uh, last year, actually, we got approached by Google to, to uh, implement uh, AMP or AMP into a uh, pilot project with Tempo 3. And um, we've learned a lot of things. And I think it's worth sharing because it's, um, I it's useful for everybody. So today I'll talk about what's, what actually AMP does, what it, uh, what it means. Um, we'll see it in action how we didn't, we've done it. Um, and the question always remained for us is why do we need it? And going further, it actually helps you why you actually want to have that. Um, but also with AMP, um, there's also some criticism which I want to address as well. So is there anybody in the audience who have ever done AMP uh, websites? Ah, okay, that's good. Um, yeah, so AMP actually is um, shortened for accelerated mobile pages, but actually, I don't know, three weeks ago in Tokyo, they renamed it to just AMP. So you can find any cool word you want. Um, I'll give you reasons for that as well. <laughs> um, yeah, and it was back then in uh, 2014, there was Facebook uh, with their um, mobile app and they, uh, they went out to a lot of publishers, um, you know, uh, news websites, uh, media websites, and they said, hey, well, we want to try something new and that's actually, uh, if you uh, build your website with some Facebook specific things, then when your news article gets shared on Facebook, it's um, preloaded before you actually click on the link. And um, that had a lot of criticism because, um, well, Facebook is Facebook, and before all the data breach uh, thing um, popped up, there was still the criticism um, by a lot of people because everything you put into Facebook as a you know, my current status from, hey, uh, birthday for, uh, I don't know, Sebastian or somebody like that, it stays on Facebook. There's no open API. So, so Facebook is like the, the walled garden, has more traffic, has a lot of traffic um, compared to the rest of the web, which is decentralized. And Facebook is all within this box or in Silicon Valley. Um, and so, Google uh, came up and Apple also came up with a, a similar format and Google's format was uh, Google AMP. And um, the idea was to just, uh, you know, make the experience for reading these media websites, these news articles faster uh, on mobile devices. So maybe you're like, okay, so what does that mean, right? Uh, still, I don't, I don't get it. Well, if we look at AMP uh, in the technology stack, um, it consists of th three parts. Uh, one is the AMP HTML part, which is um, basically HTML uh, with some web components that are defined um, for you know these news articles. But it got extended. Um, then we have some AMP JavaScript, which is asynchronously loaded. Um, and everything goes through, and, and you also add um, in your HTML tag, you add an AMP attribute, and you're, you can validate if your website or if your web page is actually AMP validated. And if that happens, everything runs through a so-called AMP cache. In the beginning, because Facebook, uh, because Google was trying that out, everything, uh, Google had the infrastructure and set everything up. Um, that was also one of the reasons, or not maybe one of the reasons, but um, a, g a good uh, reason to, to push this. Well, if your mobile, uh, uh, if your website is responsive, 
you get uh, ranked higher. That was in 2016 when um, Google pushed that topic forward. Um, and at that time, they also had this AMP cache, uh, which is a huge, it's, it's basically a CDN. Google has uh, CDNs um, in, s in place, and they added this so-called AMP cache definition on top. And your browser, basically, you, you Google for something, or you, on your, or you search for something on the web, let's put it this way, um, and you click on something on your mobile device, but only on your mobile device, and you'll get a uh, faster uh, website, which looks different. Well, that sounds easy, but there are some caveats, basically. You have to, to uh, consider some things like not well, you can use jQuery, I guess, but mm, let's put it this way. If you have like this um, CMS with a million of themes, you just click, I need this theme, this plugin, this one adds jQuery, this one adds jQuery UI, and well, then the other plugin adds a Vue.js component. You have a lot of stuff going on. and AMP is actually the opposite of that. <laughs> um, so the rules are very restrictive, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> First of all, um, the only um, you add CSS. Well, sometimes you have like five CSS files, uh, and actually, AMP pages do not have external CSS files, Th and it's the the AMP cache or the AMP validators, they also check if the CSS rules that you, you add to your CSS are actually used. So you can't add a CSS class, you know, Benny, and you don't have any Benny class on, on your web page. They detect that and say that's not valid. So um, you can only use the, the CSS um, that you actually need and that reduces a lot. So that was back, at, back then for us a big uh, issue because we, well, we minified and we had everything in one huge CSS file. Um, but if you have just you know, four different content types on, or node types on your website that's uh, or on your web page, you shouldn't show all the other 30 CSS parts for that, uh, for the other things on your other pages. So you have to think of a good ways to just take the CSS that you need and you put that in line in your HTML. And it does not, uh, it's, it only has to be, I think, 30% of your, you know, if your web page, your HTML file has like 60 kilobytes, then your CSS should, is only allowed to take 30% um, of that. So you can't do four HTML tags and the rest is a lot of CSS. Then you're not allowed to actually write uh, JavaScript, except um, it's async. Um, but we've seen the, the JavaScript components uh, by AMP. They provide um, various uh, functionality already um, that you need for a news publisher. That was in 2016. They only focused on these publishing stuff. Um, and that does most of the job. So in an ideal world, and I can demonstrate that later, uh, you don't actually need to write JavaScript anymore. And the other requirement is that uh, your web page has to have a schema.org um, definition for what you actually show. And then, you know, this whole topic of responsive images and picture tag and all these kind of things in HTML, scratch that. You know, you know, we're talking about uh, first contentful uh, paint, and that means we need to know what size this image is going to look like. So what AMP does, they generate, um, again, a web component for rendering images that are, you know, they have a ratio and they, it's exactly known how large this image will look like. And um, so you're, you can, cannot use a lot of the cool things you have with HTML5, but instead use the web components. 
And of course, everything has to run through HTTPS. Well, if you think like, okay, that's cool. I don't see the benefit for that. And uh, why should I do that? Um, so what we've done is we, we just took a web page we, we relaunched in 2018 um, where we actually went with BAM CSS and all these kind of things. I'm actually a backend developer, so I'm not uh, the HTML guru. Um, but still, you create a different version of your you know, sub page, article, web s uh, news article page, and you create, you add this link for the AMP variant. And that's how I name it, basically. And the AMP variant is this subset without the JavaScript, with, uh, with uh, rules and restrictions in place, and um, that's it. You're done. Next time, Google is indexing uh, your content. Uh, it finds the, the HTML tag, uh, or the, the link tag, and indexes that one as well, if it's valid. Um, all the mobile pages, uh, mobile browsers will have that in the result page. So if you actually, um, I don't have a screenshot for that, but that would be cool. If you uh, Google for something and you see uh, on your mobile device this flash um, symbol in front of the Google search result, that's an AMP page. Um, we can uh, demo that, however. Yeah, so if there's a flash, that means Google's actually preloading this page. <laughs> and they only do that because they know it fulfills these restrictions. That means it's not loaded with two megabytes of images. It runs through an AMP cache. And that, uh, th that means they can access it fast because it's a, in a CDN and it's not from a server in uh, Rwanda. Let's put it this way, if somebody's uh, Googling something in Germany. <coughs> And it actually, the AMP variant is loaded, you know, within one second. If you, if you click on it uh, right away, uh, you'll, it's, it's there instantly. So you don't even have to measure anything, how fast your website is anymore. Yeah, but that was, that was the idea. And that's how actually we, we got started. Um, in 2016, they were focusing on, on news because, you know, Facebook was doing it like that. But then um, the one other important topic is that you also want to have that for e-commerce because the web shops, they need to, uh, you need to sell something. And if your website's loading slow, you don't sell anything on mobile devices. Um, in 2016, they came up with this AMP variant and it was really uh, painful to actually theme it correctly to say, yeah, that's the AMP variant. It looks not as cool and fancy, um, but it's, it's fast. And we had these web components, uh, but there were just a handful of them. <coughs> so um, that's basically AMP in a nutshell, how it got started. Um, I'll just show you what we've done last year with this AMP variant. Um, what we've done in our company, we built, we have a publisher uh, in the medical sector. They, they, they're like a huge, they have uh, magazines. They went to online first. And one of the websites is theanalyticalscientist.com. And um, there are five media websites in total. And all of them have pr roughly around 10,000, you know, sub pages. Let's put it this way. And well, it looks clean and that's how they wanted the design, but that's a desktop version. Uh, it's actually a functionality there. Maybe you know, you've heard of that. It's called paywall, uh, where you have to sign up to read the full article. For, for um, this publisher, it's actually, you have to sign up, but you sign up for free, but then you can read through that. So it's very personalized. You have to have a login and these uh, things uh, we've, we've achieved also having an AMP version, but that's just a desktop version. So the non-AMP version is on the left, and the AMP version is on the right. You know, if you just we uh, use Typo3, so you have a page type, and you just uh, add a different page type, render different HTML, and that's the right, and that's the left. 
looks almost the same, except my colleagues messed up with some web fonts, but in general, it's the same. They also, you also see the components for these sharing things. Uh, here we had our own, and the sharing things for AMP, there's a web component uh, available. But then, um, now three years later, uh, we have a lot of web components that are added to this AMP stack um, because people requi requested more. Hey, it's a good, good technology, but we want to not just do our news articles for that. Um, we want to have more. We also want to use our own CDN because we don't want to um, proxy everything through Google. Um, and then roughly uh, one and two years ago, you know, Twitter started to scan also the links that you share on Twitter or LinkedIn, did the same, um, and delivered the AMP version uh, on your mobile device directly. So if you share something on Twitter that has an AMP variant, then the AMP um, version from the cache is actually taken. So more and more people are using that. Uh, our larger companies see the benefit from that. And um, what we've then done was like, hey, what if we do this not just for these publishers, but for any random website? So we took our own website um, and just built it with AMP only. So there's no AMP variant because Building this AMP variant is like building the second um, way of rendering stuff that takes more time. Customers don't pay for that because they don't see the benefit. Or for us, it was hard to sell that. Um, and so we just um, started to build our own website with AMP. And if you browse the website on the desktop, it looks like a regular website. If you browse the website, on a mobile device, it also looks like a regular website, um, except that you have the flash on the Google search if you search for b13.com. And that also uh, helped us that we don't have to, um, to do this extra effort to write this AMP variant version. We just use the AMP version. <laughs> and with these rules, our, so one of our uh, JavaScript developers was like, hey, we, we're going to, to build this website just with AMP only without any JavaScript. And he's like, oh, cool. Then I don't have anything to do. So he actually liked it that he, before he had to rewrite, oh, for mobile, we need this menu and it has to look different. Um, we just use these web components and it's, it's much easier because the, uh, the web components with, together with the JavaScript do all the things for you already, you know, carousel and all these components that are there. The paywall thing that you've seen is also um, possible through these web components. A lot of, um, because it's previously, originally was targeted for, um, for uh, publishers. There's a lot of ads thing into, uh, built into that. So um, you can have, you know, nice ads functionality um, as well. And the, the cool thing is our website, we just used this and the developers got better in structuring things. They uh, also thought about doing it the same way again and again and, and instead they just rethought about things. They write less and they write better code. And if we look at b13.com, um, I think this Lighthouse and PageSpeed, they have like 98 to 100% of uh, ranking because um, it's fast. It, pe people who, wi uh, and you know, fast does not mean, well, then it gets ranked higher. That's a SEO thing. Of course it does. But the idea from Google to why should it be ranked higher is not um, to like all the SEO agencies like, yeah, we need to push, push a website further up. It's more about, um, the visitors who are going to uh, experience your website, they want to have a, the best experience. And with that, you want to have it uh, loaded fast. So <coughs> last year, I um, went to, to Google and they actually um, released these statistics uh, already. You might have seen that. Well, 
they, they came to the conclusion, well, mobile is important. You know why? We have a lot of statistics and we just, uh, or not a lot of numbers and we, we get statistics out of that. Well, half of the world population does not have um, access to internet. Well, we have our laptop, we have our desktop computer, we have a tablet, we have our um, cell phone. Well, there are countries, they don't have that, they don't have a fast internet. Uh, and if they get something, well, they'll probably get a mobile device. So mobile uh, device is important. That was also the whole responsive thing, of course, um, because they make um, more than 50% of the traffic of the internet. I think 56 now. And it the <laughs> shocking part is that if you, um, if you look at any um, website, in average, it takes 15 seconds to load completely on a 3G network. And if, well, it looks nice on your desktop and for your customers as well, it does not mean that it's uh, helpful for the visitors. So you actually have to rethink from the ground up how to build your website. And that's why Google pushes the AMP topic further. They want to make the web more accessible for everybody. And <coughs> for all these marketing things, <laughs> They also found out, well, it's very important for e-commerce because uh, if, you, if the average website takes 15 seconds to load, usually after three seconds, people think um, there's something wrong with the website. It's not responding. So there, there has to be something wrong with it. I don't buy anything there or I don't, I, I'll stop um, waiting. I'll just uh, look for the next search result. So it's, it's quite crucial that your website's fast. And the other thing that happened, of course it was initially developed by Google, uh, but they really early found out, well, there are content management systems and content management systems uh, have, I think 60% of the web is powered by, by uh, content management systems. So we should talk to them and find ways to to build AMP into content management systems to make that possible. Well, they of course went to WordPress first. Um, and with WordPress, I don't know if you've ever no noticed how they store stuff in the database. For one page, it's in one database field and it parses through everything. That means it's slow. Um, but also adding these standards is really, really difficult. So they have a huge parser. They have a WordPress plugin for AMP and it's a huge parser that you know tries to replace things through AMP and with Type 3 and I, I'm pretty sure with Neos it's the same thing. If you do things right, you have these structured content uh, ways to define, well, that's obviously an address field. That's obviously a name, first name, last name part. And with these, these concepts, you can really uh, easily put AMP in your website. And that brings me um, to the next part, and that's why we actually want to use AMP. And I'm here not because of Type 3, but actually I'm convinced, I, I'm convinced basically by Google that it's a, it's a good idea to, to use AMP. Um, we had the problem that nobody wants to have this additional cost. So however, we also know in our company, our customers give us the money for our living. So um, if the customers are happy, they give us money. So in our company, we want to make the customer happy, not just because they give us money, but also because it makes them happy. They tell them all ab about uh, B13. And that's, that's one of the ways we're like, well, if your website's loading fast and we have a way because we haven't uh, had to invent that, um, that's really cool that we can uh, use AMP. That's cool. Then the search rankings topic that I mentioned, uh, just to give you a quick number for this website I showed uh, previously. Um, we had, I don't know if you're um, familiar with Google uh, Search Console, there's a way to see the average ranking of these 10,000 pages that are indexed by Google. And after four weeks, the average ranking went, went from um, place number 30 like on the third page on the very bottom on the average 
uh, to number 13, just because Google went over the site again. And with these 10,000 uh, subpages, we haven't even uh, remodeled, you know, the My Account section, all these kinds with AMP, but it just shows you that it's important uh, that uh, Google values what you're doing here. And, well, I want AMP because people actually are more satisfied uh, when browsing the content that's hopefully highly valuable. And I don't have to wait for loading for web pages anymore. So I really want to have that, want to have something like that. Um, but then you, s may you maybe read about AMP, some negative things about it. I um, read that too. And I was um, skeptical because of that, because some people say, Google's taking over your content and your traffic because it goes through Google CDN. It's all stored on Google. Well, yes. Some, some people might say that's actually a good thing because I don't need to have that uh, huge um, server farm anymore because it's <laughs> I don't need to have that much traffic anymore. But um, they, they opened up this um, definition and the standards back in 2016, I guess. They also switched over to um, to an open governance model. It's all public on GitHub. So actually our company is also contributing to the web components. Um, and it's steered by the publishers as well, but the people who actually build it and use it. Um, and, you know, other CDNs like Cloudflare and um, Microsoft, they have their own um, AMP cache. So it's not bound to Google anymore. And that was Google's intention, but they communicate very often that they did a very bad job in communicating <laughs> AMP in the first place. Um, and then having these uh, people say they're building their own HTML, which is not compliant to HTML5 because it's something different. Well, it's actually web components. You can still choose to use it or not. Um, it does not have to do anything with Google. Um, so what's the what's the big deal, I would say? Um, but still, that's what, what you can read about it. And the other thing is like, well, Google's taken over all the data, and then it'll be the next Facebook. Who's better, Google or Facebook? And also here, Google, I, I'm really, truly believe in what what Google's doing, because they, they built their a company on the open web standard. So everything's decentralized. If tomorrow Google's going down, well, we don't have YouTube anymore, but we, we don't have the Google search anymore, but there will be DuckDuckGo, whatever. You can still access all the content. If Facebook goes down, then all your content's gone as well. So that's that's a difference because Google's built, their the company's very focused on this open web. And AMP for me feels very much like it's uh, it's an open standard. So just so that you've heard about the criticism as well. And to sum it up, we only have one minute. For me, AMP is an open collection of web components, uh, these rules, and the CDN. It's m today, it's much easier to implement than three years ago, so now is a good time to do that. And it's backed by Google, but not from Google. And it's perfect for Neos, Typo3, and not for WordPress, I would say. <laughs> so that's it. If you want to look at uh, more AMP, AMP details, there's amp.dev, really cool. Uh, and all the HTML um, components are on GitHub. That's it. Thank you very much for listening, and I hope you enjoyed it.